Welcome back to another Autoculture vlog. Today we're doing just a couple of different chill things to the 86. Uh, mainly number one, this is gonna be the first oil change I'm gonna do on this car since I bought it. As far as I've been kind of looking at the dipstick a couple days ago, the oil does look fairly fresh still. Um, I'm not sure if that's because they actually changed the oil before they gave me the car or because the car's been kind of sitting outside for quite a while. Uh, maybe the oil change was done previously, fairly long ago. And then the oil just, you know, obviously since the car hasn't been used, it's just been sitting in there. Um, nevertheless, uh, I've already picked up all the parts yesterday. I was going to film going to uh, Autobox and picking up the stuff, but I completely forgot to charge the camera. So it was actually like completely dead. You can hear the uh, rain is coming down quite strong all of a sudden now um, it wasn't supposed to be raining today so we're gonna go do a quick stop at a place called Astro products or you know I'm pretty sure you've heard of Astro products maybe as a brand for tools we're gonna go to one of their shops pick up something that I need to change my shift knob uh, reverse trigger today so more of that coming in the next couple minutes and we made it to Astro products let's go and see if we can uh, find a little tool that I need it's like a little needle looking pin pusher thing got this sea of tools here still don't see the thing that I need oh here we go oh, never mind that's an actual screwdriver uh, let's see so hopefully this will do the trick um, I guess it's called a pick and hook tool set uh, I only really need this kind of elongated pick thing because to get the uh, reverse trigger off from the GT86, as you can see, there's a bit of a hole in there. And apparently there's some kind of pin that you have to like push out the other side. And obviously you really need something long and thin to get in there. So hopefully that does the trick. Now let's go and do it. Oh, another GT86 out there. So while the car is cooling down, the first thing I want to do is change the shift knob and this reverse trigger because as you can see it's a little bit worn out so i bought a new shift knob from revolution japan just a simple black thing and their reverse trigger which shouldn't get worn out like the stock one so let's see if we can do this it seems a little bit complicated but apparently there's some kind of pin in this hole here that needs to be extracted so Let's try doing that first. The first thing you do here, Daiki, if you want to see is take off the... Ah, fuck's sake. There we go. Now you pull this out, apparently. Oh yeah, first you have to do this as well. Get that off. Yeah, so it's not coming out, which means that there definitely is a pin inside. There's like nothing inside. But it's not coming out. But it's not coming out. So there's supposed to be a pin inside here as I was saying that you can hammer out, but there is no pin inside and the thing won't come out. So we're trying to figure out how to take it off. We're going the- Physically. We're going <laughs> the, the really hard way now and cutting this shit off. Had to melt off the old reverse trigger to be able to get it out. Finally got the pin out. Okay, um, then this goes in, I guess. There's no like wrong way, so. Oh, where's the white part? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. See, you part. need me, Marco. I would have remembered later. I don't know if I found it. Now the question is to find the hole. Well, that was a nightmare. The pin is still kind of sticking out a little bit, but it seems like it's doing the job that it's supposed to do. So let's just put the trim back on and put the shift knob on. Finally, the shift knob. The new shift knob definitely feels quite a lot lighter than the stock one. Now I've seen people like to use weighted shift knobs and not lighter ones. I haven't experimented with either so I have no idea whether one is better than the other I think it just really depends on the person as far as I know so we'll go with this one from Revolution Japan oh that looks really nice Daiki doesn't this looks really nice yeah it's like a dildo <laughs> not a dildo <laughs> you know, not, not dildo anal beats 
No. And then because we like to do everything legally, unlike Nike, we're gonna put in the gear pattern as well. So yeah, people shouldn't drive cars illegally. That's right. Or like drive illegal cars. Yeah. I never done that in my life. You should never do that. Yeah. Properly. Put it on the opposite way. That would be up. That looks nice. One more thing to do before the oil change, Daiki, is this thing, the airbag light canceller, okay, which you can, you can do that. I tried plugging in already and it didn't work. I don't know why. Okay, hopefully the airbag thing is going to work, but doesn't look like it will. Everything's back on. So since the airbag canceller is not working, I'm just going to quickly change the oil. This time we're using HKS Super Oil 0W20. Got five liters of that. I'm gonna put in the Cusco magnetic drain plug. And then, do you remember when I bought this the first time? And I gave it to you. Did you? Yeah, I don't remember. This is like the TRD oil filter which fits here. And I bought it for the automatic one, but it had an oil cooler on, so it was too big to fit. Uh. So now we can actually put this and have a bit of red okay. in the engine. Have to get dirty. Oh, this one actually doesn't move like the other one. Oh my god, it's not 17 either. No, 14? Yeah, it's 14. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, oh, it's already... Oh, it does. Ugh, the bag ended up collapsing on itself a little bit, you can see. We have a bit of an oil spillage, which we'll have to handle a little bit later. Let's get the uh, old oil filter out first. Oh, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. The oil filter is screwed on so tightly that we can't even get it off with our bare hands. So now daiki has gone to uh, buy one of those like oil filter things, the removal tool from uh, AutoBox very quickly and then hopefully that helps, but damn. I don't understand what people like, I've, you know, Usually you can tighten it on really strongly with your hands, just enough so like, you know, you're not gonna have any issues and then be able to take it off afterwards with some strength. But whoever did this one like really went to town with it because zero, like it, it's just impossible to get off right now. It's so annoying. So the old oil is out. Still haven't gotten this thing out though. So what I will do is get under here and put on the new Cusco drain bolt, which I used on the other automatic one as well. You saw how um, well it picked up all the metal bits and grits and then. I did the hard part and put the drain bolt in while Daiki's doing the easy part. <laughs> Looks really good on there. You got it off. How easy was that? Very easy. Good, good. And we get the new filter. I'll let you screw this one in even harder than the last one. Oh <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so it says 5.4. Liters with oil filter, I guess. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Looks like you have a lot of experience doing this. Oh. She likes it hard. Oh, nice. That's why you gotta lube it up a lot. I need a sponsorship from HKS. HKS hit me up. Okay, oh, should yeah. I start it? Yeah, go. If, I, if I'm dying, come and help me. Okay. First 86 leaves. So now, what are we doing, Daiki? We're washing the Lillside RX-7 that belongs to TokyoExtremeDrive.com. We have a booking today with a guy who's gonna be passenger and we're gonna take him to Daikoku and other places. As you can see, we have a bit of a scene change. All of a sudden, took a quick shower, and now we are in the Veilside RX-7. Um, and basically, it's time to do some work now. Uh, if you really wanna 
book this car for like a tour or a rental, hit up tokyoextremedrive.com. That's the only place where you're gonna find a car like this in Tokyo. I'm actually gonna go right now and do a tour with a customer and we're gonna go and hit up Daikoku. Check out that 180SX or 240SX, depending on where you're from. Oh, it's an RX-7 as well, hey there. Nice to see a stock one right next to the Veilside one. He's probably looking down on me right now. It's another look at the 180SX now. We're right behind him. Looks a bit old, not gonna lie, but it is pretty much 100% stock, apart from that turbo sticker. Unfortunately, didn't get to see much at Daikoku. That's why I wasn't featured because we got there just as the police were closing down the parking. But it was good to take out the uh, Fortune Arc 7 out again. Um, once again, if you're interested in booking a tour with us or renting the car, tokyoextremedrive.com. And we'll uh, probably feature the car a little bit more on the channel in the next few videos. But for now, she goes to sleep. Just drove a little bit uh, the car right now. The airbag light, unfortunately, still on, which is really annoying, but some of the warning lights actually came off. Like I used to have this traction control and ABS light on at the same time, which nobody knows why it comes on apparently. But um, after resetting the, the like resetting the computer and disconnecting the battery for a while, now they're not coming on anymore, which is very interesting. Um, the engine is running smoothly on new oil, no problems with that. The car is just relearning itself a little bit since the uh, computer reset. And for sure, I think the star of the show from today, uh, the new shift knob, it just feels so nice now to uh, shift with this kind of smoother thing here. And it just looks so much better now with the, uh, the red reverse trigger as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Nothing too exciting today, nothing too interesting. I hope you enjoyed a bit of the uh, the banter between me and Daiki and the little things that we were doing on the car today. And I'm going to start featuring this car a lot more. And now that it's a manual and it's worth modifying and going crazy on, and I really actually really want to start um, learning how to drift with it eventually, probably towards the end of the year as winter comes, you'll be seeing a lot more of it and there's gonna be a lot more modifications and stuff coming. So the other car that we're also gonna feature a lot is definitely the Veilside RX-7. There's a lot of work that needs to be done with that car as well and I plan on driving it quite a bit and using it for content from now on, apart from obviously it being uh, the new company car and just using it for the company as well. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. If you're new, please make sure to subscribe, drop a like on this video and I'll see you in the next one.